Ooh. All right, everyone. Well, it is that time. It is that time for another edition of Maryland's Cafe Society radio show right here on the YouTube channel. How are you on this Tuesday? It is the first day of February 2022. It's the month of love. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, of course, uh, we're going to be spreading some during the show today, but First, have you noticed that I'm wearing the red? Yeah, the red lips. If you look closely, you can see the red glittery eye makeup and of course my red top. And of course I'm wearing red to help kick off the month of February, which um, is, is um, Heart Healthy Month. And so of course I'm helping the American Heart Association just a little earlier. Um, this week. It, normally they do it the first Friday of this month and that is the National Wear Red Day. And so I'm doing it today because the show is today. But anyway, it's in an effort to raise awareness and of course uh, eradication of heart disease and stroke. And so if you want to support them this Friday, wear red. And of course you can go to Heart dot org for more information on other things that you can do to help them um, with this effort all right and so um you know i don't know about where you are but where we are right now we are in the grip the grips of winter just last week we were talking about the sub-zero weather right uh, the wind chills and and all of that well today according to the Nether national weather service uh, there's a major snowstorm headed our way in the Chicago land area. And so the predictions are that we're going to get anywhere from 4 to 12 inches of snow, depending on where you live here in this uh, greater Chicago land metropolitan area. I know. And so we all know that one of three things can happen, right? Either the forecasters are right and we will get that much snow you know depending on where we we live or they could be wrong they could miss the mark and we could miss this approaching snowstorm or <laughs> it could be even worse than the four to 12 inches of snow and so i just say be prepared now i don't know about you i, I did this yesterday evening i went out to the grocery store to pick up some things you know just to kind of stock up a little bit more in case, you know, we do end up with more snow than that's being predicted and we can't get out, can't dig ourselves out or whatever the situation may be. But after the show today, after all the post-production work and all of that, I'm going to go out one more time because yesterday, I only stopped at one store, but... Um, yeah, everybody beat me to the punch because, you know, some of the shelves were bare. I know the children, some of the children have been back on remote learning and, you know, things have been going on. And so uh, I'm imagining that along with the possibility of us getting snowed in kind of encouraged people to get out earlier yesterday. They beat me there. And so I'm going to go to a different store uh, once I wrap up with the show today to, um, you know, just stock up a little bit more just in case, just in case, just in case. All right. So uh, it's better to be prepared, right, than not prepared at all. Okay. So um, that's what's happening, you know, and in, in my parts around uh, this time of the year. And um, other than that, I'm doing well. I, I have uh, decided to change my hair, as you can see. You guys know that those braids are like extensions, right? So I got rid of that and I'm doing something that's more natural looking. I've grappled with the idea of should I let some of my platinum show or should I cover it? And so, you know. You know, I've been doing it for a few years now. I've been showing you little 
little bits and pieces of my platinum. You know, as we get older, things happen no matter how much prevention you put into play. You know, because some years ago I read about dyeing your hair, how dyeing your hair, you're uh, you're actually, this is what I read that sometimes depending on the product and what's in the, the, um, the, the packaging uh, or the mixture of, of the dye. And even with the perms, you could be killing the part of the underscalp that produces the hair color, your natural hair color. My natural hair color has always been black. When I was a little younger, it was, um, jet black. I mean, I had jet black hair. And, you know, obviously, as the decades went on, it stayed black, but it, it wasn't that that super black that it was when I was, you know, a kid. But anyway, I read that the dye, the chemicals in the dye and perms could be damaging that part of the scalp underneath the scalp that produces the hair color and uh, can cause premature graying. And so, I don't know, what is this, 2022? Um, maybe 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I stopped with, with the perms. I haven't permed my hair in, in that long. And um, it's now been, what, since the pandemic? I think the last time I put color in my hair was um, right when the pandemic started. And um, so it, what, it's going on two years now since I used color in my hair. But anyway, anyway, um, I knew that I was going to have, you know, platinum in my hair because of of, of relatives, you know, my, my grandmothers, great grandmothers, I could see what, what was happening with them, but, um, and, and even on my dad's side with, with him. And when I was 15, 16, I discovered, you know, my first few strands of platinum or silver hair. And so anyway, um, you know, I've been around for a few decades and so it's happening. It's happened, I should say. And so, you know, you always grapple with the the idea of whether or not you should let it show or not. And and so for a few years now, I've been, you know, letting it show a little bit. And um there it is. Ta-da. I, I switched up the look and um We'll see how long this lasts. I really do like the braids because it's so easy. It's so convenient. And, um, you know, it, it just saves a lot of time in the process of getting yourself ready for whatever you're going to do for the day. But anyway, um, just just a new look. I hope you like it. Usually I hear from you guys and you guys do like this little natural curly look that I have going on. So I'll wear it for a while and we'll see how it goes after that. Okay, so are you ready for the latest in the coronavirus and what's happening? And according to John Hopkins, um, the uh, number of global COVID-19 cases is now a little less than 379.5 million cases. And there are about 5,677,734 deaths worldwide now. Um, 68,000 more from last week's numbers. Here in the US, well, we're reporting about 75 million COVID-19 cases and 800 87,408 deaths. That's about 17,663 more lives lost since last week's report. And over in China, well, they're now reporting 119,970 cases, which is about 1,077 more cases than last week's report. And they're still remaining at 4,849 COVID-19 deaths. Now, speaking of China, the 2022 Beijing Olympics um, will begin on Friday, as you all know. And it's being reported that China has created the most aggressive closed loop COVID bubble 
effects of this whole pandemic. Now, uh, it's being described as a supersized version of the NBA's 2020 Orlando bubble. Remember that? Well, this Olympics bubble, which um, is being reported as actual three interconnected bubbles, is going to host about 11,000 international athletes, guests, and other participants, as well as thousands of Chinese volunteers and staff who are responsible for monitoring everyone's movement within it. Listen, they have been anal about trying to control the spread or slow the spread of this virus and so they're taking it to the olympics as well so listen the the people involved in the olympics will be shuttled to three competition locations which are about 111 miles apart all while avoiding contact with other beijing citizens yes and all the locations are connected either by high speed trains and bus routes that will be used only by the residents that are coexisting within this Olympic bubble. Now, according to the Associated Press, they're saying that China's intense COVID bubble is just one manifestation of its attempt to assert complete control over the upcoming Olympics. And I think it's also uh, to keep those numbers of the COVID cases down. But, you know, um, so they're saying that authorities have have detained activists in their homes. You know, those people who are against, you know, all of this control. Um, they've shut down social media accounts of people who are criticizing this and have declared that any behavior or speech that is against the Olympic spirit will be subject to punishment. Woo! Stay tuned, everybody. I can't wait to see how this is all going to play out. And of course, as I always tell you, during these pandemic times, make sure that you continue to stay safe and protected, wear your mask, social distance, and all of that good stuff. Keep your hands washed. No licking of fingers, <laughs> none of that, okay? All right, let's see what's happening in other news. Real quickly, I found this story. I thought it was interesting. We talked about it when I had my guest um, on, uh, well, boy, was it late summer? Um, Ms. Foxworth from New York. Um, you know, the housing market has been breaking new records across multiple fronts throughout 2021, leaving home shoppers wondering if they should buy now or if, she, or if they should wait for the hopes of more homes becoming available so that the prices can become more affordable. Is that gonna happen at all in 2020? Well, we don't know, but we do know that in 2021, the home price appreciation went up. Yes, it was looking very good for home sellers. And of course, with the um, interest rates being, you know, around 3% and in some cases a little less, things were looking pretty good for home buyers as well. So um, the experts are saying, are predicting, however, that they think that in, in this year, 2022, that um, the prices of homes will continue to rise unless the inflation continues to rise and cause home buyers a lot of problems because we know inflation makes it hard for us to just keep up with our day-to-day -day expenses right so we'll see we'll see but uh yeah there's there's just um um a low number of homes that are available and a high number of people who are looking to purchase and you know of course um that means that things are gonna cost more. So we'll see, we'll see and we'll keep an eye on that. Now listen to this story. Scammers are getting more and more sophisticated with social media becoming their favorite place to play these days. Now, according to the Federal Trade Commission who recently reported last year, social media, through social media, I should say more than 95,000 people collectively lost $770 million due to fraud, due to these scammers. Now, the most prevalent type 
are, of course, those bogus cryptocurrencies, those investment scams. Uh, following that were the romance scams. And then rounding out the top three um, methods of fraud via social media was, of course, shopping scams. So be careful, everybody. But listen, young people, yeah, were to not to the not so wise. <laughs> um, uh, the FTC reported that people between the ages of 18 and 39 were more likely to become scammer victims than the older adults. And so, yeah, be careful, be careful, be careful. And of course, before investing or buying anything, make sure that you do your due diligence, keep your money protected. And speaking of money, let's go to the stock market and see what's happening. Well, the Dow is up uh, right around one o'clock this afternoon. They were up 60 points to 34, 35,185.44 points. The S&P 500 was up 2.64 to 4,518.19 points. And the NASDAQ was down 23.51 to 14,905.30 points. Again, that's as of 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Gold was up $3.26 to $1,801.52 per ounce, and oil dropped a bit by 25 cents to $87.91 per barrel. And that's what's happening, or what was happening in the stock market. Well. And other news, we've been on the Wendy watch. I told you she's my friend in my head and I know she's a controversial person, but I've always admired her, um, her career climb and all that she's accomplished. And so here's the latest on what's happening with Wendy's. Wendy Williams, apparently she isn't coming back to her TV show anytime soon due to her ongoing health issues and in a recent update posted on Instagram, the Wendy Williams show announced a series of guest hosts for this month, February and into early March. And of course, what that means is that um, Wendy will continue sitting out season 13 of her show now she hasn't hosted all season however according due to her health issues but according to wendy herself who made an appearance on one of her social medias back in december and her team who has been saying this all along she is on the mend of course her brother has chimed in on his youtube channel her son has even chimed in so um we just want to send our prayers and wishes to uh, of a speedy recovery get better wendy get better so you can get back to what you do or if it's something new you're gonna do you can get to that all right all right and of course you know we talked about this last week on the show and i plugged it for you and i don't know if you got a chance to see it but i did and that is of course janet jackson's two night special documentary which re uh, premiered over the weekend on the Lifetime channel. Now, I didn't get to see it in real time during the premiere, but I did catch the replays, you know, because they did replay it all throughout the uh, Friday night as well as Saturday night. And so I caught the replays and, you know, I've been hearing chatter about it and different people's opinions that I've talked to. Some people said, ah, it was okay. Other people thought it was boring. Some people said they didn't, that she really didn't um, talk about things that the public had already heard about or, or knew about. Um, but I, you know, I don't know if it's because I'm a Janet Jackson fan or um, if it was in fact entertaining, but I enjoyed it. I, you know, I, I enjoyed seeing, um, hearing those same stories that I've heard, you know, over the years, but hearing them from her perspective, if you know what I mean, you know, through her eyes, through her lens, as that, that little baby, that little girl growing up in this family, and then eventually, you know, becoming a part of, uh, you know, what her brothers, um, you know, were so widely known for. So, 
So I, I, um, I appreciate it being able to see things through her, her lens and from her perspective. And even, you know, a little bit more um, explanation or um, revelation of, you know, her own experiences in, in the business and just in life in general. And so, so you know, I, I, yeah, I, I do believe that there were um, maybe one or two things that she could have maybe touched on or, or exposed a, a, a bit more, but who's to say that there isn't going to be another one, right? So um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it and I just, it really just kind of, um, for me, it just really kind of, of uh, um, just uh, acknowledged, hey, that's not the word I'm looking for, sealed the deal for me in terms of just how awesome of a talent Janet is. Now, I've always said, you know, compared to Whitney Houston and some of the other greats, no vocally she she can't compete but she has her own her own song you know her own sound her own song uh just a uh, outstanding entertainer and performer and so this documentary and the footage that w that she shared with us um just kind of confirmed that yeah that's the word i was looking for <laughs> confirmed that status and just what a tremendous tremendously strong and um grounded person that she is right so so yeah that's what it did for me and of course you know um when i get some downtime and i flip on lifetime and and they're replaying it again i'm gonna rewatch it again so thank you janet for that thank you for sharing and I hope you guys got a chance to see it. If not, you really need to check it out and see. And then you hear from others, you know, of their thoughts on uh, Janet Jackson, the person, as well as the talent and entertainment, entertainer, I should say. All right, all right. Well, it's going to be a quick show because I have to run out and get some things done before this snow starts to happen, everybody. All right. So I do have one last thing before we do um, close the show out today. And um, that is, of course, to acknowledge the fact that this is Black History Month. February is also Black History Month. And so this is that special time. Of course, we should do it all throughout the year. But this is a special time that we should take to recognize and honor the history and the incredible legacy of Black people in this country and around the world, but especially in this country. The sacrifices that they made, uh, you know, uh, the the courage that they exhibited. Um, it, it, it's just truly amazing when you think about our journey um, in this country. And here we are generations later um, and we've come a long way, but we still have a, a lot of um, um, challenges um, that we we have to face and unfortunately fight against and so um yeah just just do that uh, for black history month and make sure that you honor and remember and celebrate uh the history and legacy of of black people in this country and sadly i ran across the story i did not get a chance to um further investigate but there was a report out there that at least six historically black colleges and universities received bomb threats yesterday morning. Now that is a problem. And again, that is something I, I'm hearing that these HBCUs are, are really struggling to stay alive as well. And so um, after I give you uh, the new word for the month and it's actually just a repeat from last year but after we do that i'm going to tell you what love is as it re relates to to black history month and the hbcus okay all right so uh it's february 1st 2021 as you know and so we are repeating all the words that we learned in 2022 so for the month of february i'm sorry in 2021 and so for the month of february and 2021, our word 
to use and learn and and uh, just let sink in our souls, so to speak, was quiddity, 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 quiddity. And it means the inherent nature, distinct feature or essence of someone or something. And so we're revealing that word for 2022, repeating it. Quiddity, quiddity, the inherent nature, distinctive feature or essence of someone or something. And so that's our challenge for this month to continue to practice, learn, and use that word, everybody. All right. All right. All right. And so let's go ahead and just remind you that you do have an opportunity to promote your business, your product, your service, your book, your music, or just yourself here on Maryland's Cafe Society. Just shoot out an email to Maryland's Cafe Society um producer producer at maryland's cafe society.com to get you know more information on how you can do that and of course uh you can visit the website maryland's cafe society.com to get connected to me on social media and to uh get the link to the blog we do the weekly blog and uh so much more right um, and by the way, on this YouTube channel, be sure that you like, subscribe, and share, and also sign up for the email club. That's right, Mondays with Marilyn. I send out a nice little short, but sweet email to you. So in order to get signed up for that, you have to send your email address to me at Maryland's Cafe Society at yahoo.com. Okay, and just say sign me up. Maryland's Cafe Society at yahoo.com. All right. All right. Now, what love is before we go, what love is uh, for this month is Black History Month. Let's just focus on Black History Month. And I'm, I'm putting out that call to action for for you to, you know, if you haven't or if you already are to just make sure that you support some kind of substantial, real effort to advance black life here in America and across the world. And so, you know, whether that's supporting these HBCUs who are are in trouble and sadly at the same time are having to deal with these um, issues of, of receiving bomb threats and, and all of that, uh, do so do so you know financially support them or any other way that you can think of to support the hbcus and all that that means and and stands for you know when i was coming up um hbcus weren't necessarily i mean in the south there was a sense of pride for them because you know most of them that's where where they are in the south and and you know that's where you know the founders um were rooted um, but, um, and, you know, when you go outside of the South and you talked about HBCUs, when I was coming up, it was, it wasn't, it, it wasn't something that was promoted. It, it was, they were promoting or pushing you to, to segregate and to attend those, um, I mean, to, to desegregate and attend those, um, white established universities because, you know, Unfortunately, like with so many other things um, in life, even now, they were looked upon as the better institutions. And so um, despite the fact that my father attended a HBCU um, and in my heart of hearts, I, I wanted to, he went to Alcorn State. I wanted to do Alcorn State or either Jackson State University, but um, because of that negative connotation associated with HBCUs, I didn't. I went to, you know, some uh, a couple of the white universities. But anyway, um, that was then, and this is now, and we know that the HBCUs are all of that, all of that, all of that, all of that. And so again, we ask that you support them and support just black people this month like you've never supported them before because you know it seems like um with all of the advances that we've made we have to fight to keep them and we have to uh, continue with that challenge of advancing further 
So that's what love is this month. It's Black History Month and the call to action associated with it is to make sure that you support um, Black people here in America, um, whether it's a supporting legislation um, that will help advance Black life or, um, you know, if you're in a, a position of power where you can hire Blacks or create opportunities for Blacks and um, just acknowledge um, the accomplishments and contributions of the Black people in your life. All right. All right. That's what love is. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody, we'll do this again next Tuesday right here on the YouTube channel. And until we do that, be sure that you live, you laugh and you love. Remember, the blog will be out either tomorrow, no later than Thursday. And of course, uh, hopefully you can catch me on social media. I know I've been um, not so good lately on the social media. I'm going to get back to it, though. And um, but for sure, for sure, for sure, we'll be back here on the YouTube channel next Tuesday. As always, it's been a pleasure and a privilege, everybody. Listen, get out there and get your basic essentials and even just things that you want, just in case we get snowed in around here in the Chicagoland area. All right. Stay safe, everybody. Until the next show. Peace.